We are going to look at how to piggyback off another ASIN, meaning that there is a product that is in the Amazon catalog, could be found on Amazon.com. You have that product and now you want to create that same listing and sell on that listing. That is the definition of piggybacking an ASIN. So let's say we have this Clearasil Daily Clear Tinted One Ounce product. There are a couple different ways we can go about finding listings for this product. Whether we have it or maybe we have a supplier that has it in their wholesale catalog. So the first step that we're going to do is the simpler one which is taking this UPC that's found on the product and we are going to go to Amazon Seller Central, Catalog, Add Product, and it will bring us right here to this page. From here, what we're going to do is we are going to input this UPC into the search field. So let me go ahead and do that. Now remember, there's two ways that you can have a listing added to your catalog, meaning added to your inventory and the manage inventory view and that is either by piggybacking off a listing or creating a brand new listing that is not found on Amazon. So let's go ahead, let's search this product, see if there's any other listings for it. And sure enough, there are seven different listings. So this first one is rank 48,000. I'm gonna right click open in a new page. This is a five pack, rank 400,000. Right here is the rank, here is a Pack of 24, which is a full case, rank 341,000. This product doesn't have a current rank. Here's a pack of four. Here's 456. And here's the best rank one uh, at 5,679. So I'm going to look at all these listings and see if any are worth it. I'm not going to create, I would not create the ASINs unless I already have a confirmation from my supplier that the product's coming in. Otherwise, it'd be a waste of time. But for the purpose of showing you how to create a listing piggybacking an ASIN, I'm going to say, hey, you know, here is, here's a couple ASINs we found and then we're going to go ahead and create those listings. So let's take a look at this listing. Now we're gonna just say this is profitable. We have a whole section on how you decide whether a product's profitable, uh, how much velocity that you want to purchase based on the information found on that page, and of course using Keepa. But for the purpose of just showing you guys how to piggyback on a listing, we're going to say that yes, this ASIN is profitable. It is a one pack. So I'm gonna go here, back to here now. I already have all of these other listings open up that I want to take a look at. They're open in these tabs, so I'm good. Okay, click here, sell yours. Okay, so I am going to put the formula that we discussed before, two digits for the month, two digits for the day, two digits for the year, followed by we use five digits for the price, if you are listing products over $100, you would use six digits, uh, so on and so on, right? So if you plan to, uh, that would be what, that would be the course that you would take. Uh, now remember, this is only at the beginning stages of selling on Amazon. Eventually, you're going to want to use some sort of software for your for keeping track of the pricing you paid and who you got it from and what the item number is. But this is a great place to start, and you know it worked for us for almost the first year. Okay, so now I'm going to say the price we're getting it for is three dollars and one cent. My supplier is Immersion Health EH, and their supplier item number that I found in their wholesale catalog is 4545. New, I put the price that I want to be selling it at, and now here you make the decision whether I will ship this myself or Amazon will ship and provide customer service. 
the bottom option is if you're going to be shipping it to FBA and Amazon Fulfillment Center where they will handle the logistics, the packaging and shipping directly to the customer when it's purchased and it'll also have the Prime badge. Uh, the top if you want to ship it to a customer yourself and then you would put the quantity in here. So I'm gonna say this is going to be FBA and I'm gonna click save and finish. And there you go, you've created a listing into your own Amazon catalog. Your inventory will now show there. You go here, you click save and continue. Even though I said we don't create listings until we get back confirmation pricing for our supplier, we do create the listings before finalizing that order to ensure that there are no brand restrictions, um, that there's no limits, limitations on the listing currently, that maybe the listing is in hazmat because then I need to change up the way that I'm gonna be shipping it. Uh, if it's a flammable or an aerosol, I have a limit that I could ship that product. So I gotta make sure of all of that before I confirm and release the order to be shipped to me. So this is what I'm doing here right now by going to this next step. I would click save and continue here that was asking me about the dangerous goods of the product, whether this product was a hazmat. If you don't know, you could just click no, and whether the product has a battery, which obviously it did not. Now, we're just doing a dummy shipment right now just to see if there's any restrictions on this product. So there we go. We're gonna put a quantity of 200 in here and click the tab button. And because this is yellow, continue, and down here, I don't have any type that says flammable or aerosol. I know that this is good to go to Amazon. Uh, it is not a hazmat because the type doesn't say aerosol or flammable. And there's no restrictions because right here where it says information action required, there's nothing in here, so it's good to go. I'm gonna delete the plan, knowing that I can order this product without any issues. And I am done. The product is officially added to my catalog. I could search it by SKU here. And here is the listing we created. The clear cell stubborn acne control. Here's our SKU. Here's the price we're gonna be offering for it. And once the product comes in, all we'll have to do is click this action button and send and replenish the inventory. There you go, you created your first piggyback ASIN. Okay, so now that I have this one listing here, I'm going to go back and see if there's any other variations that I could sell this same UPC, same product under. And I simply grab this UPC. I could search it here again, but we don't have to do that because we already have the different tabs up here set up. And so I would go off, go forth, I would look at the listing. If the listing makes sense, is profitable, it has the correct velocity that I'm looking for, I would follow the same process, same suit, and create the next SKU. Um, Let's say, for instance, um, there is the same exact product. We just listed a one pack. Let's say there's another one pack that we did not list, uh, such as this one right here. It's the same exact product, but it's under a different ASIN. Um, so what I would do is when I create my SKU, I would just add a uh, a at the end, which means it's additional, and if there's a third, I'd ask, add a double AA, so it'd be the exact same SKU with an A, and then followed if there's a third exact same type of product, just a different ASIN variation, it'd be AA. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, because most of the times what you'll find is a single listing, then a two-pack, three-pack, multi-bundle, maybe a variation, uh, not too many, which will be the same product with the same pack size. However, it does happen as this being the case. Okay, so now I'm going to say that I went through all of the these different piggyback opportunities by looking at the ASIN. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look it up by description. So see if I missed any opportunities that might not have the same UPC. What you'll learn as we go through the next phase in ASIN creation is a lot of sellers have a stockpile of their own UPCs that they purchase on websites like speedybarcodes.com and they use those UPCs 
uh, to create brand new listings. What I'm trying to say is that a seller could have listed this exact same product, this clear cell, but they could have listed it using their own UPCs. So using the manufacturer's UPC, you will not be able to find that product using the method we just showed. And this is why it's so important to look it up also by description. You don't know how many sellers don't do this and they miss out on so many wholesale opportunities. Okay, so I, I, want, I want it to be descriptive but I want to do overkill right I don't want to so I want to see what comes up here as I don't really know the wording that was used by another seller who created it so I'm looking at these different listings we'll go over of course all of these different uh, third-party softwares that we use these Chrome extensions to help us look at listings quicker and all the tools that we use but you know, here's a two pack that we did not see before. I'd open it in a new tab and I'll continue searching for any other opportunities that I might have missed out on. Um, we can take a look at this one. However, this one says it's maximum strength while R says tinted. So this might not be the same product. Okay, so we're gonna stick with these two. I look at this first piggyback opportunity that says maximum strength. Uh, pack of three. Oh, look at that. Good. And this is why you want to take a look at these. I mean, it did not look like the same product, but here you go. It's showing you the old image and the new one. However, even the old one shows vanishing. Mine says tinted, right? So I am not going to pick that up. It just could cause too many issues, especially if it's the wrong product. So now I'm going to look at the other listing here. Okay. Here we go, old and new image, and I can see it has that peach tinted on there. This is in fact the same product. So the old one said tinted, the new one says concealer. It's right there. Um, so I know I'm purchasing the right product. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that ASIN. CFWO. And the reason I want to do that is I want to show you guys also by title here that this product was not found when I did the UPC search. So let's look at uh, the title, Clear Cell Daily Clear Tinted Acne Treatment Cream One Ounce Pack of Two. Let's see if I can find that same pack of two here. It is not here. So here's an opportunity that I would have missed. And it is a, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty good listing. It's, it's moving decent. Let's see, probably, you know, 100 a month. Yeah, there you go. Uh, lots of opportunity I would have missed out on. So now I put that in here. I go to create the listing. And let's see, I would follow the same steps here where I would put in the SKU like I did with this previous, uh, like I did with the previous ASIN that we created. So I'll just, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna copy this SKU I'm gonna to have to change the price because it's a two pack. So from 301, it is 602. The item number stays the same and I don't have to add an A to the end because there's no difference in my SKUs. The reason you would have to add an A if it was a one pack like the other one is the fact that Amazon requires you to always create a unique SKU. You can never reuse a SKU that you already have in your inventory. So I put new, I put my price is gonna be $14.99. I could change that later once I actually receive the product and I'm ready to ship to FBA. And I would follow the same steps as before where I would click save and finish. I would go through this process here, clicking save and continue. Then I'd look at the dangerous goods uh, information and I would, is this battery? No. Is there any regulation information? Uh, hazardous material? No. Submit that move forward, save and continue. And now I just double check myself to make sure there's no restrictions on it. Okay, there are none, I'm good to go. You see the, the continue button's yellow. If, if there was some sort of like a limit, then this would actually be faded gray. But the one last step you wanna do is just make sure the type, and yes, it's standard size. It doesn't say aerosol or flammable, so I'm good to go. There you go. You guys now know how to create a piggyback ASIN 
and how to find it using a UPC and then going forth and using the description to kind of comb out the rest that's in Amazon.com and make sure you're not missing any opportunities. I want to prepare you and start kind of thinking that way because for us here, it's second nature now and that's what I, I need it to be for you so you can scale, so you can grow, so you will have a successful business and tell the world how Amazon Lit helped you crush it. Stay lit. So in this lesson, in this section, we're going to be covering managing your Amazon inventory. There is a lot going on here. Your inventory is crucial to your organization, your business, whether it be on Amazon or anywhere else. And so there is a lot to cover here, a lot to understand. This is going to help you scale your business correctly once you fully understand the processes that go into managing your inventory correctly.